The first theory which was postulated is the intensity theory by Plato and this theory says that pain is not a unique experience but as an emotion that occurs when the stimulus is intense and lasting. Later, Goldschneider also told repeated sub-threshold stimulation or supra-threshold stimulation will cause pain. Hence, it is also called as summation theory because it has to be a repeated sub-threshold stimulation to cause a pain or it should be a supra-threshold stimulation to cause a pain. Okay? So, this is about the intensity theory. The second theory which was postulated was Cartesian dualistic theory by a French philosopher called René Descartes in the year 1644. He told that pain is a mutually exclusive phenomenon. He said the pain could be a result of a physical injury or a psychological injury. And he said the physical injury will not influence the psychological injury and the psychological injury will not influence the physical injury. That's what he said. But when these both combine together, that is when the physical injury and the psychological injury combines together, it will have a synergistic effect on pain. Hence he called as a mutually exclusive phenomenon in this theory. He also stated the soul of pain is the pineal gland and the modulator of painful stimulation and sensation is brain. The third theory which was postulated was specificity theory by Charles Bell in the year 1811. He identified that there is different sensory inputs have different pathways and later in the mid 18th century, Muller find out that infinite number of receptors are present for different sensation. So it's called sense specificity theory. Specific receptors are present for specific sensation. Specific sensory inputs have different pathways specifically. Hence it is named as specificity theory. The fourth theory is the pattern theory postulated by American psychologist in year 1929. He said that there is no separate receptors for each sensation. He says that the each sensation relay a specific pattern or sequence of signals to the brain. Brain then takes this pattern and decipers it. That is, depending on which pattern the brain reads correlates with the sensation felt. The fifth theory is the gate control theory, which has produced a revolution in the pain research. This theory was postulated by Ronald Melsack and Charles Patrick Wall in the year 1965. They said when stimulus gets sent to the brain, it must first travel three locations in spinal cord, such as substantia gelatinosa in dorsal horn, fibers in dorsal cornum, transmission cells in dorsal horn. They said that substantia gelatinosa modulate the signals that get through which act as a gate. So when the gate is closed, no information from the periphery will go through the cord. If the intensity of signals coming is strong the gate opens and the signal can travel to the brain and the brain then process it and individual feel the pain. Melsack and Wall also suggested that cortical regions of the brain as additional control mechanism in addition to this gate in this whatever has been mentioned that this additional cognitive control mechanism is responsible for the effects of cognitive and emotional factors on pain experienced. For example, if a person is in the negative state of mind, then the pain which is perceived will be amplified by the cortical regions of the brain 
due to their cognitive and emotional factors that will amplify the pain intensity which is sent to the brain if a patient or a person is in the negative state of mind after 30 years of gate control theory the neuromatrix theory was postulated in which they said that cns is responsible for eliciting the painful sensation rather than the periphery they told that the neuromatrix consists of spinal cord brain stem thalamus limbic system insular cortex somatosensory cortex motor cortex prefrontal cortex they said that the signals which have been perceived from the periphery reaches these areas of cns and the areas of cns work together to feel the pain and hence this particular phenomenon they call it as neuro signature since the cns work together to form to feel the pain hence they are called as neuro signature the peripheral signals can alter the neural neuro signature but cannot create the neuro signature of its own it's very important to remember that the peripheral signals can alter the neuro neuro signature but cannot create a neuro signature of its own and also they explained about the memory formation when the pain is felt by a person the next time when the patient is facing the same scenario he has a memory which has been formed by the previous pain exposure he also postulated not only due to the physical injury he also considered the cognitive and emotional factors in this theory this biopsychological theory gives a comprehensive explanation for the etiology of pain which was given by rock crinker in the year 1954 He has said that the pain is a complex interactions between biological, psychological, sociological factors and hence he also stated that any management of pain we have to consider all these factors if we are managing the pain without considering these factors there will be a inadequate care or inadequate assessment of pain and hence this theory is very much important for the patients who are coming for chronic pain treatment the next video will be on measurement of pain various measuring tools i hope you like this video on theories of pain if you like it kindly like it and also comment below how you feel about it and kindly subscribe to the channel thank you god bless you all